Okay, so in this video, we will consider an example of a non-trivial limit. And you will very soon see why I'm using the word non-trivial. So we are asking what is the limit of x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 6x minus 27 as x approaches 3. Well, let's first try and get a feeling for it. minus 27 so as x approaches 3 x squared will approach 3 squared which is 9 9 minus 9 is 0 and so our numerator is approaching 0 over what about our denominator well 3 squared will be 9 plus 6 times 3 which will be 18 9 plus 18 is 27 Minus 27 is 0. Hmm. So as x approaches 3, both our numerator and our denominator are shrinking to 0. And so what's going to happen here? It's not clear. As we have something that is getting smaller and smaller and smaller over something that is also getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Hmm. Let's investigate a little more. So at this point, we're at a loss. Now here's the notation. We will put square brackets around this, which is an equal sign, and write the word case. To say that what we have here, because 0 over 0 is not a number, it's undefined. So we use the square brackets to show our intuition, to realize that what we have is a fraction, where both the numerator and the denominator are shrinking to 0. And this is a so-called indeterminate form. Or indeterminate case. Same thing. Indeterminate because on the surface it's really not clear what the limit is, even if and even if it actually does exist at all. Well, let's get some numerical intuition. We are asking, as x approaches 3, so when x is really, really close to 3, what will happen to this fraction? Well, let's try x is 2.9. 2.9 is close to 3. And let's call this expression f of x. So, whoops, sorry. Let's take x to be 2.9. So very close to 3. And let's evaluate f at 3 point at 2.9. So if you do 2.9 squared minus 9 with your calculator or by hand, you will find negative 0 0.59 over. And if you do 2.9 squared plus 6 times 2.9 minus 27, you will find negative 1.19. And if you use your calculator and perform this division, you will find approximately an answer of 0 0.495798. So when x is 2.9, which is fairly close to 3, the function f is about 0.495798. This looks like 0.49, is it 0.5? We're not too sure. Let's take an even closer value of x to 3. Let's take 2.99. Let's evaluate now the function at this point. So if you replace x by 2.99, you'll get 2.99 squared minus 9, which will give you exactly 0 point negative 0 0.0599 over if you plug in 2.99 in the denominator, you'll find exactly negative 0.1199. And if you compute this quotient with your calculator, you will find an approximate answer of 0.499583. So it looks like we're, hmm, 
getting a little closer to 0 0.5. It went from 0 0.495 roughly to 0.4995. Let's go one step further. Let's take the value x to be 2.999. Let's evaluate the function at 2.9 well, 2.999. If you do so, you'll find a numerator that is exactly negative 0 0.005999 over, replace in the denominator x by 2.999, and you'll find exactly negative 0 0.011999. If you compute this quotient, you'll find an approximate value of 0 0.499958 which is even closer to 0 0.5 we went from as x went from 2.9 2.99 2 2.999 the function was about 0 0.495 0 0.4995 0 0.4995 so if we had to guess it looks like as x is approaching 3 f of x is approaching 0 0.5. So this will be our guess at this point. We don't know that this is the exact answer, but it is a guess from our numerical calculations. So here's our guess now. It looks like, as x is approaching 3, the function x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 6x minus 27 is approaching 0 0.5, or if you prefer, 1 half. But as we've said, this is simply a guess coming from our numerical experimentation. How could we prove that this is actually the right answer? Well, the idea is in factoring. If you go back, both polynomials are equal to 0 when x is equal to 3. So we can use here the 0 theorem. If you have a root of a polynomial being a 0, a value of x, where the polynomial is equal to 0, x minus this value will be a factor of the polynomial. So we have here as a free factor x minus 3. So let's try and factor and see if this is helpful or not. So both polynomials are 0 at x equals 3, so they both have as a free factor x minus 3. As there are simple quadratic polynomials, the remaining factor in each case would be very easy to find. What times negative 3 is negative 9? Well, clearly it's positive 3. If you multiply this out, you will get x squared minus 9. Same trick here, what times negative 3 is negative 27, positive 9. Let's check x squared plus 9x minus 3x is plus 6x, negative 3 times 9, negative 27, check. So this is a proper factorization of both quadratic polynomials. And now you may want to cancel the x minus 3 terms. The question is, are we allowed to do so? Well. As x is approaching 3, x is taking on values are getting closer and closer to 3, but we know x is never exactly equal to 3. And so if x is never exactly 3, then x minus 3 is never exactly 0. As the only way for x minus 3 to be 0 is for x to be dead on equal to 3. As it's not the case, x minus 3 is non-zero, and so we have a non-zero term over itself, and how we can cancel? As the result is simply 1, and so we're left with a simpler expression now. x plus 3 over x plus 9. Okay, so let's see if this is more interesting. So we went from 
what we considered a 0 over 0 case, our intuition of the problem, as x approaching 3, we had a fraction where both top and bottom were approaching 0. So we didn't know what was going to happen. Now let's again look at the intuition. What kind of case are we dealing with? Well, as x is approaching 3, this will approach 3 plus 3, which is 6. Over, as x is approaching 3, this will approach 3 plus 9, which is 12. And you see by factoring the x minus 3 term, we went from a 0 over 0 case, which was indeterminate, to now a 6 over 12 case, which does exist. Therefore, as x approaches 3, the fraction is approaching 6 over 12. But if we simplify 6 over 12, that's simply 1 half. Or if we prefer 0 0.5, which proves that our guess was actually correct. That the limit of x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 6x minus 27 as x is approaching 3 is indeed equal to 1 half or 0 0.5. Now you may wonder, will this always work? And the answer is, well, yes, as long as you have a ratio of polynomials. And you'll see more examples in the next videos. Whenever you have a ratio of polynomials, where they're both giving you 0, you have an indeterminate case. And you will see, whenever you have 0 over 0, anything can happen. You see, the final answer was not equal to 1. You can't just say, well, 0 over 0 is just something over itself, which is 1. It's pretty obvious since the final answer was not 1, but 1 half. So you have to be really careful when you have a 0 over 0 case. The idea is you'll always have a free factor, and once you factor it out, you should, at least in most cases, obtain a fairly simple limit, which will yield the final answer. And that's it. But keep in mind, if you have your calculator, you can always guess what the limit may be equal to. You're asking what happens to the function when x is very close to a given value. So you simply have to plug in the function, a close enough value of x, to the value we're approaching, and you should get an approximation to the final answer. And we can see that we had a pretty good approximation since the final answer was simply 0 0.5. That's it.